this week, the PBR has landed in the land of enchantment. Will world number one, Cassio Diaz, cast another spell over his competitors? And will fellow world number one, Manhater, continue to make mincemeat of his adversaries? These answers and more, next. Cassio Diaz is such a complete rider. Direction doesn't phase him one way or the other. Man, Cassio Diaz is flawless in his riding right there. Diaz with another statement of domination. Our world number one and then some. That's big time stuff right there from Cassio Diaz. Not cracking in a big moment. 90 and a half. Cassio Diaz seems to eat pressure for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. With 15 seconds to get out of there, here we go. It's gonna get wild in the pit, everybody. It's gonna get wild. Watch this. And I'm so glad to see Alex up on his feet and walking out of here, the Bass Pro. Oh! And then not done, just stepping all over him. And another angle, and look at this. Just takes a shot. And folks, he can hear you right now. He is on his feet right there. So now he's got oh. go. There you go. Now, get him. Help him, New Mexico. <laughs> Listen here. You know what? I'm the screen door and let that guy in. You don't want him to come in out of the cold because he'll light the fire. Pacheco, as you watch that ride back, Whataburger's going to bring us the score. How about you for 85 and a quarter points for the Iceman? Puts him right now, number two. Nice. And we are underway. There's two world champions talking to each other. They're happy. Felipe Furlan, here he is. do it man in the first round get a qualified ride take a hair bit of that pressure off remember the top score right now is 85 and three quarters the numbers for furlon 86 and a quarter not been ridden so far 10 seconds alves let's change that Change it! Oh, great job by your U.S. Border Patrol yep. safety team, bullfighters. And how big would it be for Silvano, though, with this many points on the line? Yeah. He's 36 in the world. If he's going to get back to the World Finals, he's got to start doing it now. Yeah, the folks, there's more money, more points at a major event. And this is the final of the majors before we make that stretch run to the PBR World Finals in Texas. But that 35 spot, as we were talking about Alves earlier, that's what we're looking at. And yeah, red flags flying all over the place. Red flags flying all over the place. So Winston Enrique Da Silva, as you guessed it, is going to get offered a re-ride option. 
that bull not bucking up to its potential. So a little flat spin right there. And Winston's got to know that if he wants to get out of this event, if he wants to leave the Timer Invitational, the right. number one man here, it'd be in his best interest to take that re-ride. But well, I'm also not him, so. Gonna make a decision. Ooh, I think he's shaking and it off. And I think he's shaking it off too. He right. is. Well, it, folks, it's a it's a blazing it's a blazing forty seven points. Yep. All right. What a I want this place to come alive and help him ride. Let's go. So, Felipe Furlan is in the lead with 86 and a quarter points. What are the numbers? 87 and a half! Oh, Keyshawn Whitehorse stepped up, and the odds were not in his favor against that bull. I'll tell you that. The odds were not in his favor against that bull. Ladies and gentlemen from Edgewood, New Mexico, the Hall of Famer, Cowboy Cerrone. My man, boy, it's glad, to, great to have you in the house right here. You have accepted the challenge, Dana White's Twisted Steel. Oh, by the way, who is standing right there coming up at the PBR World Finals? There he is, Cowboy. You've been in training since making the announcement there in New York City. Tell us, how's everything going? Man, uh, I wish I could lie to you guys and tell you great, but I'm uh, riding like high school bulls right now, so I'm getting ready to get on the best in the world, and if it's going to be your last one, might as well be the best one, so let's go. Well, that's it. You never back down from a challenge. There is absolutely no doubt. So what are you looking for right here? What do you have your eye on right here as you get ready to watch the bull that you're going to face off at the finals? I'm hoping he acts right in the shoot because that's the only part I'm worried about is him bucking forward and giving me a crank and headache. So we'll see. Uh, we'll watch him. Hope he rides because that'll be number four covering and we'll see. Well, listen, good luck to you. New Mexico, right now is the time to tell your man, UFC Hall of Famer, you are behind him, Cowboy Cerrone. You're not going to want to miss it. Be a part of it at the PBR World Finals and watch that guy. Cowboy Cerrone go against Dana White's Twisted Steel. The biggest and best bull riding of the year. Take the fight. Take the fight. Slide up and ride. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Woo. Wow. Twisted Steel. <laughs> Puts on a show. Show me a shot of Cerrone. He is looking at the replay. Look at the Yeti bull score. A half a point away from 45. 44 and a half. That is world caliber points. Folks, there is Cowboy Cerrone is he puts it into his mind. And the next time that we see those two, it will be in Texas as he will face that bull. New Mexico, you know what to do. Let's give your man a little bit of encouragement and love. He came here and he saw. And the final chapter of that story is yet to be written. Took that chin. Easy. He's been on him. He's ridden him as Grover told you. Here we go. Bobby. Bobby. Get there. Yeah. Oh, no. His hand popped out. Oh. Oh, my goodness. I thought he was going to ride him with the tail of his rope. 
Watch this replay. His hand pops out of the bull rope. And it looked like about a jump and a half, maybe two jumps. And then I think that bull kind of kicked him in the face mask. Right there, his hand's out. He's got nothing but the tail of the rope. And then it's alley-oop. Yep. And hard to see where that bull tapped him on the way out. But folks, Bob Mitchell needs a little bit of love right now. That shake of that hand. He's hot. Let's fly it up here and tend to business, Taylor. Do your job. Let's go. Rose Cone Renegade. Get you some. Oh, I'm glad to see that from Mason Taylor. He looks good. Wow. He looks good. Dominating. Look at this replay. Mason Taylor right here, man. You can see his outside foot comes up. He immediately drives it back down and then uses it and opens up. How about 87 points? Love it. Man, I don't know about you. Every time I come here to the Ty Murray Invitational, it is goosebumps watching the world's best. Looks like he's got a seat. Can he keep it? Can he keep it? No! Oh! And he's going to pay the price. He's going to pay the price. Yeah, and believe it or not, if he would have about one more jump, that bull would have went back the other way and got even yeah. faster in that spin. Ooh, our PBR Sports Medicine team. Right there, he is on his feet. There he is, New Mexico. There you see Rich Blinn and the staff. Down there, here is the replay right here. Bull turns right there into his right hand. Left hand. And then watch this right there takes a shot and I could not tell I don't know if his back feet split him but regardless of that he was able to walk out of here so now do you want to see Cody Jesus get an eight second run oh my goodness wow wow wow, wow. Bamboozle. Let's see this again. Mm. Look at that. Folks, Jesus needs to hear from you. Needs to hear from you. Six, five, let's ride. Come on, JRV. Do it. Do it. Do it. He's got him. Joel Ricardo Vieda, remember 87 and a half is in the lead. The numbers, 89 and a quarter. Ah, he is now on the number one spot for the number eight ranked man in the world. Love it. Caden Bunch from Tahlequah, Oklahoma, Jersey Mike. that bull that bull is as he's as cute as a 4-h calf but he is dirty mean that muley's special i'm glad to see that bull on the truck now jw hearts that would come from shad smith survey rodeo 
But that bull is going to fit in well here. Yeah, he's going to go his record to nine and oh for that bull. There is Caden Bunch, 33 year old. Here we go. Keep going, keep going. Hey, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, how about it for Eduardo? Look out. This guy is getting hot and surging at the right time. Solid numbers coming in. Not going to take the lead over Scott. What are they? But 84 points for Eduardo Aparecido. Yeah. It's exactly what he needed to do. Oh, did Jose Vitor Lemmy right here. Let's go to Mexico. Bubba G. He's rode this ball before. Back the other way. That is the third time those two have met up. How about it for the two-time champ of the Look at him, absolutely dominating tonight. Not gonna take the lead over, but another Whataburger qualified ride. 84 points, 84 for Lemming. And perfect, that is 11 qualified rides here so far in the opening round this evening. He's riding 42% of these bulls coming into the timer invitational. Horn Dog is the bull that he has at night number one. Let's go. Come on. Oh, Diaz Krimber, you better just fix that rear view mirror a little bit and take a look at him. Because Dalton Castle's coming and he's coming fast. It's another Whataburger qualified ride. We are going to show you the replay brought to us by Bass Pro Shops. And let's put him into the top five with 86 points for Castle. 86. Krimber has got to put his foot on the gas. The 18-year-old. Here we go. John, help him, help him. Yeah. Yep. Unbelievable. Look at this, the water burger replay. John Krember making it happen. A Following the journey, 90 points, and Krimber has raised the bar. But let's go. Folks, he's been on this bull two times before, and two times this bull has bucked him off. I am going to do it again. Mayhem. Wow. And you said it. Would the third time be a charm? The answer is no. An advantage, Krimber. Your winner tonight, John Krimber! John, let's talk a little bit. This is the Ty Murray Invitational. You've been at this event before, but that's been watching from behind those bucking shoots. Now you have a chance to not only win a major, but the Ty Murray Invitational. How's it feel? Oh, you know, I'm very blessed to be riding good. Uh, can't thank the good Lord enough for giving me this ability to do this every day. And uh, I can't thank all y'all coming out and supporting us. I'm just excited. I'm just going to keep going bull for bull and jump for jump.
So the absolutely the rankest bulls in the world are coming to this event. You've got to gear up now for two more rounds and a championship round, but you got it in you, don't you? Oh, that's just how I like it. I like getting on bulls, and uh, we're just going to keep it rolling. Ladies and gentlemen, how about it for your round number one champion tonight, John Krimber. So this bull's making it stand tonight inside of the pit. There you go. There you oh, go, Kevin. Okay. There you go. Hold on. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. All right. yeah. He All right, took a licking right there. He did. He did. Pull oh, the Bass Pro Shops replay. And Caden Loud, look at that. And folks, there's a live look at him. He can hear you right now. That's good news. He's on his feet. And he needs a ride. Come on, Petri. Do your job. Whataburger qualified ride of the night. Facing elimination. He said, heck with that. I want to ride on Sunday. How about 86 and a quarter? Great job, Jesse. Absolutely. Put a smile on your face, Jesse. Look up. There it is. For the world champ, come on, Kaiki! Help him, New Mexico! Come on! There you go. Ooh, he hit hard. He hit hard. Oh. Good job. Great job. Great job. You bet. All right. Our PBR Sports Medicine team immediately over there. Dr. Tandy Freeman, Rich Blinn, and they're very talented staff and folks there he is he can he can hear you wow watch the end of this the ice man a little bit different angle right here at it and then oh Folks, the numbers are in. He is immediately going to be the number one man here in Albuquerque, 84 and a quarter. So that puts us right now with Kaike Pacheco on top with 169 and a half. John Krimber, JRV, those guys are still yet to ride. Dalton calling for him. and a half on two. They're all chasing the number three ranked man in the world. Oh, you bet. We are getting warmed up, Castle. Now, the number one man. 
can take the lead in this event with an 87 point bull ride right here. Come on, Nick, let's go to work. Oh, I don't like that. Nope. Scary situation, and he's oh, no. quickly going to sports medicine, Dr. Tandy Freeman. Yeah, he needs to hear from you right now. Be fast. Little hop skip on the front end. Come on, Ederson. witness right there folks let me tell you that was that young man's very first pbr unleash the b series qualified ride and a waterburger qualified ride tonight of 84 and three quarter points 84 and three quarters nicely done now take a deep breath. Good job, Santos. You were moving on. To get inside of the top 35 of the world to secure his spot at the PBR World Final. Spice is the name of the bull. Come on. Yeah. Thought that was going to happen. That guy's good, folks. That guy's good. How about it for Tiago Salgado? Yeah, let's do it, T. Give it to him. Woo. Oh, folks, right now the top score is 86 and a half. The numbers for Salgado, 86 and three-quarter points. What a clutch bull ride, Tiago. Great job, young man. Jacoy hails the lead. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, Albuquerque. Oh, he's moving on. Texas Rangers. but I got goosebumps right now. That is so uh, cool to watch. That's how it's supposed to be. Oh. He's been on him. He rode this bull in Arizona. JRV, come on! Help him! Help him! New Mexico! He needed better than 86 to get the lead. Is he going to get it? How about 86 and a quarter?
wondered how he was going to hold up yep. this week. I would say the champ is holding up just fine. Absolutely. Now, now, Lemmy is going to move inside the top three with this qualified ride. How about 85 and three quarter points? 85 and three quarters, but boys, the pill of the whiskey bucket shit is ready. Go, Eduardo. Shot it. Stay there. He's locked. Yep. He is locked as fresh as frost on a cool mountain morning, that guy is. Eduardo is on a mission to win this world championship, and he has shifted it into overdrive. His second qualified ride, how about 85 and a quarter points? 85 and a quarter in Eduardo Aparecido, by the way, right there. Hey, folks, real quick, real quick, real quick, I need to do this. That is to win a world championship, and the second thing is to buy his mother a brand new house in America. Watch this! Cassio Diaz! Just lights out. <laughs> the number one ranked bull rider in the world, Cassio Diaz. The five wins, and now he is hovering for another one, 85 and a half points for Diaz, and just like that, Scott, he is back in the conversation. Yeah, the number one man in the world. They've been together before. He's rode this bull before. Oh, John and Boomerang is going to best John Krimber who won last night's round. Now he has 90 points. And it was not a replay from just a couple of weeks ago in Indianapolis. Folks, he is not happy. But what do you say you give John a little bit of love there tonight? Going to be a no score. He will be back for Championship Sunday. We have a new leader, a man that is chasing history. He wants to become the second man to win three Ty Murray Invitationals. He's got two. Can he win three tomorrow? Your leader here in Albuquerque is Joel Ricardo Vida. They love JRV in Albuquerque. You've won this event two times before. You could win it for a third time and it'd be a major. I want this, no? It's so fantastic to stay here with these people here. It's a good energy. You just get better with time, don't you? The older you get, the better you ride. The time is no, no matter for me, you know? <laughs> That's why you're one of the best ever. Folks, how about it for Joao Ricardo Vieta? He could start it off with a bang. Eduardo with his chance to move a full bull ahead. There is his answer to all that preamble. We'll do the talking, he'll do the writing. Absolutely. Hey, that was solid right there. And he knows it. 87 and three quarters. Really good ride. Some change ups right there. Bull gets a little close to the chute. Back around to the right, and you see Eduardo. He never bobbles. I, you can't ride one any better than what Eduardo just did. Hey, I know you're going to like this little bit of insight. When I visited with Eduardo, I'll call it in the modified locker room beforehand, I went up and congratulated him for his two rides so far. He looked me dead in the eye, and he goes, I've got two more. Yeah, man, I love that. And we talk about Pacheco all the time and that focus that he has. 
That's what Eduardo's looking like to me right now. All the points available at this event. Pacheco's having a good event so far. Yeah, got it back. Yeah, and just like that, Army Slasher will not necessarily dim Kaiki's hopes, but put a possible dent in the ease with which he might have won this weekend. Yeah, there'll still be a path, right? He's still probably going to be in that championship yep. round with two good scores down. Watch this back. Good. Just back. Just back right there. Mm -hmm. that, that one little time, it's so hard to get back forward once they've they've got you just a little bit behind like that. There'll still be a path for Pacheco, though. Absolutely. This crowd showing their appreciation. A little bit like Jose. He gets a lot out of them. We are going to see a lead change. Dalton Castle doing what Dalton does. He only needs 84 and three quarters to move to the top. How much more is he going to get? Drum roll, please, judges. 91. That's just a great ride. That's a great little bull right there. This is what the PBR is all about right here. This is a long round. Long round of competition, and that's a legit 91-point ride. That's an outstanding bull and a great ride by Dalton Castle. ROB of 2.5. You maybe could argue he could have gotten a little bit more. Let's send it back down to Kate. Mr. 90-pointer, and this time it comes on your good buddy's bull. How much more meaningful does it make it? Oh, uh, you know, I miss traveling with this guy each and every weekend. Now getting to have him with breaking bulls, breaking the best quality of bulls, it makes it a lot of fun. Pretty good at the stock contractor stuff and the biggest cheerleader too. Well, I just want to make sure I bring good enough ones where they can they can win on, and so it's so rewarding getting to see your best buddies get, go 90 and here, you know, and Albuquerque get the pit on one of yours. It's, this is so rewarding. It's awesome. Well done, to both you and your bull. Great ride. Thank you. Yeah, well, Ederson got on his first calf at 15. He went pro at 18. He said, I started showing up and winning. Back in 2016, he won Barjetos, a huge rodeo in Brazil. He tried to come over and compete in the States earlier. Visa issues kept him in his home country, but he said, I knew I wanted to come over here and compete before I retired. Now, he's 36, not looking to retire soon. He said around 40, but he wanted to have his shot here and planned on being earlier, but told me now is the time. Asked him what it's like riding here. He said, it's a dream. But there's also that pressure, I want to show that I'm supposed to be here right out of the gate. Yeah, I think every rider faces that pressure. And guess what? The world now knows Santos definitely can ride as that becomes his second score of the weekend. Yeah, and I, you know, this guy's 36 years old, but Man, he looks like a 26-year-old out here to me, the way he's riding. Seen him three attempts now at this event, and I think he definitely looks like he belongs and is going to do some winning at this level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, based on, you know, Kate's report, I mean, anyone who has won Bajetos and anyone that knows about bull riding knows that a Bajetos winner is the real deal. Absolutely. Yeah. No matter when yeah. you talk to Absolutely. us. Whiskey trip oh. might have Salgado seeing double as that was just an ugly move. That was that was a different kind of trip than, yeah. than he had in round one with Crimber. And you know what though, as a stock contractor, I, I think you would have to love to see this out of your bull after he got ridden the first night to come back after a night off and perform like this. Mm -hmm. That's a bull that loves his job. Well, and Salgados, even with that buck off, does have a slim chance of coming back. 86 and three quarters has him in 10th overall. And with a punchy Pete, not easy. No, he's not easy. He's going to give you a big one or two and likes the right. Joao struggles that way, but if he can stay with him around the corner. Oh, yeah. no, you were right. He started to go around the corner, but then Joao came down. The touch happened. And hopefully Vieta is only stunned. Yeah, look, this guy, I wish we had an hour to talk about the toughness of JRV, but that's a bull, he 
wasn't comfortable with. He knows he's having to force things, trying to get forward. It, it just doesn't fit what he does so well. And then a tough landing on a pretty darn sore knee. He'll be back. There is very little doubt that sitting in third overall, we will see him again in the championship round. Eight seconds of justice from Jacoy. Let's listen to the pick. One happy rider right there, as that should be the ride that gets him to the championship round. 90 and a half. Let's send it to Kate. Jacoy, well done, but you haven't even heard how many points you are, and here it is. What do you make of that in front of this crowd? Oh, it's something I always dreamed of growing up on the reservation. I'm just glad to have the opportunity and I'm just trying to capitalize on that. It's incredible to earn the invite here. It's another thing to step up and ride a couple bulls. How did you harness that pressure into eight seconds? I just told myself it's just another bull, another bull ride and go at him the best I can. Well done. Thank you. Craig. Well, that mantra without question has paid off for Jacoy Hale. He moves all the way up into fourth overall. <laughs> hey, that guy right there is popping up on a lot of people's uh -huh. radars right about now. Here it has been for our world number one. You go back to March 24th last year, Mac. He debuted here in Albuquerque. His first career ride as we're showing you on high noon. Then, of course, team season came along where he started really impressing. Yeah, he really did. J.W. Hart, Galerme Marchi, you can see in the picture there with Diaz. They have done a phenomenal job with him. I mean, this guy, he was lights out all team season. Number two in the MVP race right behind Jose. Well then, the Unleashed the Beast season started, right? And it didn't take him long. St. Louis, he wins, get his first career win. He becomes number one, and then, wow, we were there. That Man was, hater. That was, <laughs> that was so much fun to watch. And that's one of those rides I'll remember for the rest of my life. Yeah, I think anybody will, whether you were watching live or whether you've even just watched the video and then, but more just let him be him. Absolutely. Because him is really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> him works. Yes. There's another one. As Diaz aboard I'm Your Daddy becomes his dominator. He's now two for three. Now, what Coach Prime say? He's him. No, yes. Our world number one, there's his coach and good friend during the team season. Well, he's his good friend all the time. J.W. Hart, 86 and three quarters. That moves Diaz all the way up into a tie for fourth. <laughs> this bull, some forward movement in there. That gets a lot of guys, you know, those big forward jumps, gets them back and then makes a sharp corner like that. Diaz never bobbles. Hey, thank you for saying that because looking at that in slow motion, that out was a real test. Diaz makes things look a little bit easier than what they are sometimes. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> Rock now at 20. Jersey Mike going for a little bit extra credit, proving that Mike can be the man. It's just so appropriate that that's one of JW's bulls. <laughs> He's got the same kind of attitude. Yeah, I was going to say thank you for adding that layering in there for people that might not know but JW. This bull looks like this bull looks like. Hey, these guys should just be wearing this bull out, and nobody's gotten by him yet. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit also like J-Dub. Nothing really gets by J-Dub. <laughs> oh. You might think you've outsmarted him, but he's got a memory like an elephant. 
Yeah, and he's mean, just like that bull. <laughs> he's mean. That's like two times in a row you mentioned that he's not nice. I, I no, love he's Jay not Dub. either. I love Jay Dub. He is very nice. <laughs> One of my best he's, buddies. He's just kind of a pussy cat with claws, but you just got to know how to treat him. Mason Taylor trying to shift the bull into a better position, and there's the nine. Ooh, nice little twist by Jumpman and Mason Taylor not feeling too well with him. Now that... Yeah, you, yeah, well, we watched this back, Craig, and this one kind of beats him right here. One jump's got him back. Instead of moving up and forward to everything, just having a hard time trusting it. Head comes up, rides over. You can see him sore hobbling out of there. Well, that trip and visit with sports medicine could have some ramifications because at the moment, his 87 is good enough to make the championship round. There's the Ty Murray Invitational Trophy. It's pretty simple, pretty great reason to get your tickets now as Swearingen hopes to move into the top team with this ride. But it is not going to happen. The struggles continue for Swearingen, and once again, thank goodness, for bullfighters. Absolutely, thank goodness for bullfighters like the ones we have here. This is this bull has been doing this to everybody too. Big, strong, kind of slow, gonna change it up. You look at the scores right there, 45 and three quarters in the long round. This is in the championship round. Yes. That's a long rounder right there. Best bull score we have seen all weekend. And you can just Take a look. Both sheets there. You got Cody Webster, of course, Lucas Teodoro. They are your three bullfighters doing the tough work. And with a smaller arena, right? In years past, we've talked about how this arena definitely changes the dynamic and how the bullfighters place themselves. That's Seconds of excellence as Marquez definitely, the proof is in the pudding. And against Shot Collar, that was a good one. He will definitely have the strength on one, 86 and a quarter. Yeah, and you, you watch this guy's lines, you look at his form, his posture going out across here. That's, that's what you want right there. I mean, that's, that's what you want it to look like. This kid rides really, really good. And he shows it. Yeah, that 86 and a quarter actually becomes interesting because that puts him, I believe, in a three-way tie for 13th. Remember, Mason Taylor looked as though he might have a possible injury. So how we break up the three guys that are tied for 13th or 12th. Oh, oh my gosh, Lemmy. Hammered. There are re-ride flags, but forget about getting on another bull. We just have to hope he's okay. Yeah, there you see the flag, but I, I think that's the furthest thing from everyone's mind right now. It's just checking him out and... This is wild right out of here. Hits and just blows straight up. Jose's back trying to cut the corner. When that bull comes down, it just brings everything with it. It's right here. He knows the right's coming. He's wanting to get there, and that bull rares, and you have got to go forward with him. There's the contact. contact. Yep, and then the aftermath, and gosh, I mean, we just can't say enough. There should be plaques for every single one of these bullfighters. As Joe say there with the whole sports medicine staff around him. And again, as this crowd shows their appreciation, he has declined his re-ride option I mean, based on two, he would still be in the championship round, but I think 
whether or not he is even in the championship round is yet to be decided. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I definitely think that's up in the air right now. Okay, and now we're getting word, Kate saying that he is out of the championship round. So that means two guys based on injury. And on a weekend, again, great reporting from Kate where he said he felt the need to be back. The last six events, I mean, he has been on a roll. But Blackstone able to make Keyshawn rethink slipping into the shoots on this occasion. Might have stepped on him too, getting out of there, stepped on his hand or something a little bit. Look like. This becomes another question mark because Keyshawn's in, in that top 12, but he looks to have some issues. And sports medicine, very busy. And this is an interesting arena in terms of how sports medicine has to kind of parse right. the way they look at riders, right? right. They've got. I'll just call them smaller rooms, both down on the dirt. What is the lowest recorded ride score in PBR history? Go. 47. All right. Do you, for extra credit. Ooh, there oh, you go. 31. You were going with the, the 47 champ. from this weekend. Hey, now here's my question. Did he keep that 31? Yeah. Holy What smokes. do you mean, did he keep it? He had to keep it for it to become a score. Wow, 2008, I was out most of the way. Yeah, yeah. See, you were blinded. See, I was Winston's blinded by that one right there. Yes. 47. Hey, Kate, you still want to stick with Max, the smartest no, person hold on, up Kate. here in the booth? In my defense, I was out a lot of 2008, <laughs> so I didn't see a lot of that. He's facing legend. Legend does it yet again as the Bull now runs his record this season to 7-1. and one. I just love it here in Albuquerque with second to the bottom and you get legend. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a great Bull right there. It's not like this is some sort of eliminator. He kind of hits flat-footed right here, but that is a leaping great Bull to be a bunch of points on. Great championship round of Bulls. And each week on Championship one, Sunday, excuse me, we set the record on the turntable, put the needle down, and it usually starts this way with the Bulls having their way. All of us just kind of shook our head thinking, this is an uphill battle yeah. for Cowboy. And this Bulls trajectory right now wow. is, is, is going a direction that doesn't favor Cowboy being successful there. Cowboy was here on Friday night scouting out the competition. He even knows the, the tall tale and tough task it's going to be. He's done better. Not that hit. Keyshawn Whitehorse has connected for eight against Dana White's one and only Cowboy Cerrone. You better take that one back frame by frame because that is how you do it. 88 and three quarters. Yeah, Keyshawn dominates him here. I mean, this is just a really good ride. Different kind of day than what I was talking about in round one. Hop skips, round to the right, and then just clackety clack in the same tracks. White Horse takes advantage of it, though. You never know what kind of day these bulls are going to have when the gate is open. That's why it's so important not to talk yourself out of what you've seen a bull do previously. Great job by Keyshawn. Yeah, he continues his tear through these top placings, and he's with Kate. You've made a name for yourself, conquering the bulls no one can. So what's the key? Because I'm sure Cowboy Cerrone would like to know. Fight, and he knows a lot about that. The fight doesn't stop till you make it stop. Talk about that ride in front of this place. I was really disappointed in my previous ride, so I took all that energy, the negative energy, and used it in, in focusing and honing in. And I'm really glad it worked out on that bull. Congratulations, great ride. Thank you. Craig. I just love Keyshawn's composure after that. You saw the adrenaline. He calmed down. He knows how good it is. Well, I think that's a trap that they fall into. We've seen it with Alan DeSouza in the long run.
right then left does not work today as John Krimber has done it for the second time this weekend. And he says, what do you think of me now? Really good job by John here. Again, he won't take the lead, but that was about more than just the one ride. 91 and a half. Hey, this is a heck of a ride. This bull has a, no, he follows up a good out with another good out. That's what I was talking about. Out of a right hand delivery, just to look in around to the left. And Krimber, once he goes left, it's all John Krimber. And again, we've been talking maturation a lot today. What stands out for me is after the buck off, he comes back and converts. That's, and some for some guys, that's really hard to learn how to not give up on your event when something goes wrong. John Krimper at a young age already starting to show, hey, I can mess one up and bounce right back. That ride moved him all the way up to third overall. Now Another one is Kaiki becomes the third man to go the distance and give himself a shot at moving to the lead. He's now three for four on the weekend. He needs 94 and a quarter, and he gets 90 and three quarters. Yeah, but don't don't take anything away from that ride right there because that's about as good as you can do it if you're Kaiki Pacheco. I mean, smokestack. Has a great day out there around to the right and gets stronger as this ride goes. Like right here, he's starting to get a little higher, drop a little bit more, and Pacheco just keeps getting better and better every jump. Pacheco pulls the big boy boots on this weekend. Three for four, all the way up to second. And remember, we were talking about a guy on the outside of the top 15 in the world trying to move in. Uh, rides like that and weekends like that are all you need. This bull has got so much hang time and up and down to it. Just ride that. Cassio Diaz! Two for two against the number one bull in the world. Guess what, Albuquerque? That was a treat. 91 and a half is the score that he needs. This should be more, and we should have a new number one. We're waiting for it to be official. Come on, judges. Let's see how big you can go. It's 93 and a quarter. Look, I don't even care about the scores. <laughs> Both times that he's rode him, I see him here being congratulated. Gene Owens, the owner of the bull right there. J.W. Hart, his coach. Uh, that two totally different types of outs, and Diaz dominates both of them. Uh, that bull gave he gave him his best. He gave him everything he had right here. A couple of wild jumps and then cranks it around there. Leaps and kicks and Diaz sits straight in the middle of him. Yeah. Uh, that is so fun to watch. And, and, and to your point, right, Mac? I mean, that's what a great bull does. A great bull yeah. tries new things. Absolutely. It just didn't work. Yeah, this bull just got away from him in Little Rock. See if he can get it going here. that finally Vieta is able to extricate himself from. I, I really hope, like this is, this is a wreck and it doesn't go well. But I hope every young guy watches this. This is what it takes right here to be this tough. You watch what Joel just goes through and what the pain that he's already riding with and a really bum knee and look at him. Yeah. All right, they ain't helping him out of the arena. Uh -uh. Well, you got JW even asking if he's okay. <laughs> there are a lot of reasons why Joao has been a fan favorite Absolutely. since 2013.
He's going to move to the lead no matter what. It's just about how much? 89 and a quarter. And this is Mike's motive every time around to the right. Eduardo's handling that perfect. But this changeup right here, back to the left, you don't see this very often from this bull. Eduardo didn't bother him a bit. That is an example of being in the zone. When you write are a bull rider and you would make it look that easy, come on. That's doing your job right there. Dalton Castle now knows exactly what he needs to do for the win. Oh, no. Flying wired with a great out. And that leaves Castle flummoxed. Which means, for the first time this season, and ninth time in his career, Eduardo Aparecido is a winner. Congratulations to Eduardo. What a, what a big time win for him at this point in the season. Eduardo, what a weekend. You've slowly been making your way up the standings, and here we are not far from World Finals, and now, put it all together in front of a crowd like this. How did it come together for a perfect weekend? I'm very happy for this, uh, this time. Uh, God helped me every time. Uh, I try every week for right bulls. I mean, basically for this moment. I'm practicing bull every time. I'm happy for some guys push me, my family. I have this moment. What a win. Congratulations. Thank you, kid. Twice second already this season, our Kubota ride of the night. Once again, another look at him against Mike's motive. Yeah, and look, a great veteran bull, a really wise pick by Eduardo, but a great job with the direction change. Well, for Eduardo, majors matter more. He moves up to fourth overall in the world, now only 500 and change behind Cassio, but Cassio's second place here has increased his lead against his closest challengers, John Krimper and Dalton Castle. Meanwhile, we began the show talking about the big names on the outside of the top 15 moving in. You didn't see it, but Kaiki Pacheco's result moves him into the top 20 overall. Oh, so it's Pacheco, coming. Pacheco, yes, it's coming. is a force to be reckoned with. Well, it's a full day of bull riding next Sunday. Join us first for a bucking battle on CBS at 12 p.m. Eastern, and then the championship round from Nampa right here on CBS Sports Network at 8 p.m. Eastern. For Justin McBride, Kate Harrison, and our entire PBR crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching.